Hello, this is Craig, and I am trying to figure out the best way to do a fantasy mission generator. Now, normally fantasy missions are carefully built so that uh, events happen in a way which is, is suitably fun and epic. I think I've come up with a way to let the player develop that on their own. So this is a very early game fantasy mission where there is a slime pit and the evil slimes are coming out and attacking a village, and your job is to defend it. Now you go ahead and bring along hero 1, level 1, level 3, and level 5. Um, these are the three heroes you brought with you on your quest. The enemy has some slime units, which I'll put boxes around so that you can distinguish. Now the basic idea here is that this objective is one you want to take and one the slimes don't want you to take, whereas this objective is one the slimes want to take and they don't want you and you don't want them to take it. So this is a very balanced situation. Play always goes from the highest level to the lowest level. Um, so the first slime might say, "Well, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, and attack. I can put myself anywhere I want, so I'm going to put myself right here." and I'm going to attack the base. Now what I have done with this slime, uh, well I'll show you. Now I get to go next. I can interpose myself. So I'll go ahead and put myself right here. So now uh, this number six is attacking me rather than attacking the city. But if I wanted to try and hit the base, I can't really, I guess I can just barely sneak past, but Let's go ahead and, and pretend that this was configured correctly so I couldn't. Yeah, see, I can't quite get past. So if I attack, I'm going to hit the queen. And uh, that that's fine. So let's go ahead and we'll attack the queen. So what we've done is a reversal. They were going to attack the city, so we jumped in the way and we're attacking them instead. Except what I haven't mentioned yet is that all of this is actually going backwards. We'll talk about that in a second. So the next thing to go is the four slime. Uh, so they're going to go ahead and put their four slime here and attack the city. And of course we're going to do the same thing we did before and put our three hero here. But this time we can actually attack their base so we'll go ahead and do that. Now obviously they don't want this to happen so they're going to interpose with their weakest unit. And they're actually going to add their weakest unit onto the queen attacking the five. The idea here is that uh, if they can kill the five, then the queen has a, an easy shot on the city. We have one hero left. Now what are we going to do with that one hero? Well, it's a kind of a tough call. Um, we could add our attack onto the queen to try and make it so the queen will definitely get killed. We could interpose here to try and make it so that five will almost certainly survive long enough. I think the best thing we can do, though, is sneak in behind and attack their base. So now I have put them down in order from strongest to weakest, but the way it actually executes is from weakest to strongest. So this happens first. Your teammate attacks the slime village. Now uh, radius is matter here, so this teammate has a certain radius. There are no other teammates within that radius, so that this guy is going alone. He's attacking the base alone. Uh, now, chances are what actually happens is there's some sort of in-game explanation for that, where the three of them are going, and then they say, wait, look at that, they're attacking the village, and they, and they go head off. So this guy attacks the village alone, whereas the other two heroes go off towards the... This guy attacks the slime pit alone, whereas the other two go off towards the village. The slimes then attack the two people who are going off towards the village. And this basically turns into an all-out melee where they attack, and then you attack, and then they get reinforcements, and then you get reinforcements, and then the queen gets involved. Um, and it turns into this giant epic battle here. Uh, and each phase of this battle, so the end result is that there are a few battles here. One, attack the slime pit. Now this attack happens without any interference, so this whole thing is up to our lowest level hero and they have to pull it off on their own. After that you get this giant melee which starts, and this is what's called a segmented melee. 
that means that it changes, that reinforcements pour in. So you get attacked and then you get reinforcements that attack them and then uh, you, you can see it unfold. Now exactly what happens here depends on exactly who gets defeated and who gets driven away. There are two kinds of defeat. There's defeat and then there's uh, total defeat or you know destruction. So if three manages to, uh, sorry, if five manages to defeat six, then six won't get to attack the city. But if two actually manages to succeed and defeat five, then two might actually destroy five. And if that's the case, six will attack the village and there'll be no heroes around to defend it. So it unfolds into this uh, uh, fifth level hero must survive situation where if the fifth level hero falls then the queen has a uh, free attack on the uh, on the city now this is a very basic example but the whole point here is that uh, what you're doing is you're allowing the hero and the villains to build a a uh, steadily increasing uh, set of, of battles they they unfold and the tension increases uh, now, I've given you a really basic example. Let's try a somewhat more complicated example. Same basic idea, right? Here's the village. Here's the slime pit. Now, this time we're going to include some mountains. And we're also going to include uh, the idea of the enhancement radius. So, if the enemy is within this radius of the slime pit, they gain power. If you are within this radius of the slime pit, you lose power. And the same thing goes for over here, but in reverse. Now the reason for that is because otherwise you just butt up against the city and not put any room for heroes to get in otherwise. I'm also going to change it so it's no longer equal. We have the same heroes, one, three, and five. But now, we have more slimes, two, four, six, and eight. Now, because the enemy has more slimes, they put down their extra tokens. So they get to go first, and they get to go twice. So the mountains are kind of in the way, so they can only fit one slime here. They can actually target the city. Um, they could put another slime here, but then it would pass through this slime and, and every object is opaque. So if you are targeting your own characters then you are wasting your time. So instead they will go ahead and put the other slime down here to force the, the uh, heroes to split up. So the two slimes uh, are now attacking and we get to try and defend from that. Well one of our defenses is quite clear. We should go ahead and we should put a powerful unit here within the aura catch the queen's attack and what we'll go ahead and do is we'll launch an attack on this slime so what I have just set up here is this guy blocks the queen while attacking the jack I guess you could say while attacking the next the first in command since he gets to go before the first in command if he beats this character this character doesn't get to attack the base and if he beats this character then he'll have to weather the queen's attack he won't get a chance to heal between fights so what we are going to do now is we're going to try to set up a chain as the slimes where we attack this guy. Now as before, there is a radius effect. So around this slime is a, is a halo, and any other slime units within that halo get involved in the battle. So four goes before five. Four launches an attack against five, and because six is within his radius, six is drawn in. So this means that when four attacks five, four and six both attack five. Now when three happens, uh, three decides that the best thing to do here is to probably build a wall. By going here, he, he prevents the other enemy units from getting uh, past five that way, and he also can draw a line to the slime pit. This means that this guy can attack the slime pit all the way from over here at the base. The last slime unit gets to go, and its priorities are clear. Defend the slime base. So it goes here, 
and then it decides it's going to counterattack or preemptively attack three. And now you've got one standalone little unit. Uh, so since we've got the heroes, last time I showed them all splitting up, so this time I will show them all staying together. So in this case, uh, what is one going to do with himself? Mm, he is going to attack the queen. Now this is a, a, a move. You can see that what we've got here is, is uh, it appears to be a bit of a mess when you don't know what you're looking for. But essentially, what's happening is all of the heroes are within the hero radius, so all three of them move, move as a unit. So all three of the heroes are involved in every battle. Whereas the slimes are split up into two groups, the mid-level group and the uh, queen and her minion group. The battle that unfolds is hero versus queen and pawn. Uh, well, it's hero versus queen and pawn, then it's pawn reinforcements, because that's when the pawn gets to go, so therefore the pawn, the pawn's turn gives it extra reinforcements. Same thing with the hero's turn, because the next thing we have, the hero attacks the, the reinforcements, so uh, hero second wind, which is the hero version of reinforcement. But then we have... Uh, uh, incoming um, mid-level enemies for four and six here. Then we have five, so hero second wind again. And then finally we have these two guys getting reinforcements in a row. Reinforced and reinforced. Now this is just a huge tangle of a battle. So what we've done here is we've planned out this massive battle where uh, you are fighting the queen continuously from the moment you get there. And you are just battling it out continuously. Now here's the thing. There are a few details, a few opportunities, that are part of this that are not in this map. So if we were to label these, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, six and eight. But we can tell that three, three isn't targeting two on purpose. Three is actually aiming for this. So if here, if we can manage to kill off If we can kill off this pawn, then three will be able to attack the base. And that means that you'll be able to gut the base, remove the bonuses it gives, and apply a penalty to all of the enemies. So this is an opportunity which you have built into your system. Um, similarly, if by here... because Unit 6 is attacking the town. So if 1 ceases to be, then Unit 6 will have free a free, uh, free attack on the town. Now obviously the Queen also has, a, has an attack on the town if they manage to defeat 5, but that is the final part. So uh, um, uh, I guess you could put another arrow here for that. So this is the plot arc that we just built by slapping things down. Now, this plot arc is actually kind of interesting. It is just one giant melee. It's, it's a fight that never ends in this case. There are other situations where the fight does... Uh, there are breaks between fights. Um, but in this case, that's not the case. This is just one continuous fight. And we have built a fight where you have a certain number of turns before these various objectives happen. So if you are fast right off the draw, 
and attack the pawn as rapidly as possible, you might be able to weaken the queen. Otherwise, you're in for a long slog where you have to protect your level one hero. You have to keep them in the battle until near the very end of the fight. And of course, since he's level one, that's actually quite difficult. This is the sort of thing that you can build. Uh, there are some other features that I haven't mentioned, um, such as terrain bonuses and a couple of other details. But, uh, but the game really, as far as I can tell, this setup uh, really allows you to choose whether you're planning to turtle, like these, hero do, like these heroes did, do some sort of flying attack, like these slimes did, or some other configuration where you might actually end up deploying uh, special conditional objects. For example, uh, the town might have uh, town walls, and uh, if we were to have a town here, and if it has the town wall objective like this, if we put a hero here, then on their turn they activate the town wall, and any slime coming in hits the town wall and can't get through. So this can be really effective having these things on the field and choosing whether or not you're going to take advantage of them. Uh, there are also some situations where you might have an exploding volcano or something, um, or the faster you do something, the bigger the bonus. But that's the basics. The basic is that since you go from strongest, weakest, since you plan from strongest to weakest, but you execute from weakest to strongest, what happens is you end up coming down at the end of, of the mission. You, you come down to the final epic confrontation where the big bad guy and your strongest heroes are duking it out over what the actual objective is. And everything up until then is maneuvering to try and get an advantage or trying to seize some of those optional objectives. And it really does seem to produce a fairly good um, structure, a fairly good mission creation system that doesn't require you to have a, na a narrative engine, doesn't re require you to have any plot uh, systems in place. It just rolls right along based on how the players, uh, or the player and the NPCs, lay their characters down. And I think, I think there's a lot of potential. And that's it.